All right. This is a special interview with Pastor Bob Beeman um, for Sound Off tonight for our special show where we're reflecting back on two of uh, my heroes growing up. And mine, yes. Michael Bloodgood and Ted Kirkpatrick. Yes. Um, Sadly, both of them have been taken away from us too short and it was out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. But... Before we get into that, I wanted to show Pastor Bob this. You sent this to me in like oh, 1989. Gosh. Look at that. 90. <laughs> and, I, and I haven't changed a bit, Doug. No. No, no you no. haven't. <laughs> your, your, your hair's a little bit lighter. A little, a little bit, bit lighter, lighter. Not as quite as curly. And yeah. Yeah. But you, you revolutionized my life. And my, my parents <laughs> were like, well, that guy kind of looks strange, but yeah, they they listened to your Bible studies and listened to um, and read all your um, letters and the intense record stuff, and so oh, that's great, good. They listened yeah. to you as an authority, so that was awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So why I asked you to do this is because you are, uh, I guess, the heavy metal pastor, the authority on old school Christian metal and new school Christian metal. Mm-hmm. And you knew personally both Michael Bloodgood and Ted Kapatrick. Yes. Uh-huh. Can you share a special story about both of them? Well, um, gosh, I can think of so many stories. Um, I remember in 1987, um, we did the first Christian metal festival, actually. It was called Metal Mardi Gras. And uh, Bloodgood came to do the festival. And they came in a, a fairly small, old motorhome. And I said, wow, you guys, this is a long trip, because I knew that they'd come from up the coast. They said, no, we've been touring the whole United States in it. <laughs> and uh, it could barely move. It was on its last legs. And and I just thought, you know, how cool is that, that these guys have this kind of, of dedication? And, of course, that is true of, of blood good, and it's been true of Michael. Uh, Michael, you know, went on to be a pastor as well as being in right. blood good. And his church actually um, supported our homeless ministry every month, even. I mean, we wow. he always had a burden for people on the streets and all of that. Just such a great guy. Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. What about Ted? Ted, um, gosh, there's so many, so many things. Um, I think the one thing that I remember about Ted the most was probably the time with Skizik's Dilemma. Um, I played keyboards on the song. And, um, you know, I I play keyboards. And honestly, I play keyboards very well. I just don't play heavy metal keyboards. <laughs> and so he said, so I want you to do this calliope sound that's, that's kind of off key and just disharmony and has this kind of a weird feel to it. And and kind of a circus gone wrong, you know? Right. And uh, so he said, let me just, let me teach it to you. And he grabbed a guitar and played it on the guitar. And I sat down with the keyboard and we took so much time trying to pick it out. And I just remember trying to play it and it didn't come easy for me because it was so different than anything I'd ever done. And I just remember him smiling and giggling as I'm struggling through. And uh, I had that kind of relationship with Ted. We were really good friends. And uh, it was fun. Yeah. He seemed like a great guy. And yeah. I mean, I, I met Michael Bloodgood many times, but the first time I met him was uh, on the Out of the Darkness tour. And he, yeah. um, I was like 12 or 13. I, I can't remember. I was a young, I was a young lad, but yeah. um I met Ted once when he did a benefit. The tourniquet came out and did a benefit for a kid that was a big fan out here mm. uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, and he had passed away. And mm. they did a benefit show for him, and it was it was awesome. But um, 
one of the other things that I wanted to hit you with, and and I and I talked to you about this is, uh, I was actually talking to Jimmy Brown this afternoon, mm-hmm. and we were talking about mortality and how we're now being faced with, you know, we lost Chris Hyde, we've lost other band members. Yeah, quite a few. Yeah, but this was two heavy hitters within a month of each other, mm-hmm. and. I think a lot of people ha- are starting to think about it. Maybe coming back to Christ, maybe um, thinking about their own mortality and where they stand. Well, that especially, I think, Doug, is thinking about our own mortality because, you know, the the more people pass on and, you know, I, I've been working with Christian rock music for 50 years which means that a whole lot of my friends, Larry Norman and others, Keith Green, you know, those are some heavy hitters. Those guys passed on a lot of years ago. Right. And they were, they were great friends. The, you know, I think this has always kind of been the case. I had Larry Norman, by the way, speak at Sanctuary with me one day. And he and I sat up in front of the church full of a thousand metal heads. There were about a thousand people there that day. And, uh, and he and I sat and talked about the old days and the, the roots of heavy metal, really, or rock and roll and the stuff that he did. And, you know, I, I think as we get older and older in this movement, and this movement is 50 years old, we're going to see more and more of it. And, right. You know, Michael Bloodgood and and Ted and and others now are some of those that we've lost along the way. Right. So if you could give an encourage, you know, just your pastor Bob, we all come to you for encouragement. Look at that smile. I love that smile. <laughs> That's what I remember. Thank you. But uh um do you have any encouraging words for for anybody that's out there listening? Well, you know, I guess at 70, and I'll be 70 in just a couple of months, um, I've had an opportunity to think about my own mortality quite a bit. Um, you know, it's been a couple of years of some health difficulties, and, and you think about that. And, you know, it is so good to be able to say, Doug, like the hymn does, it is well with my soul. You know, I really am ready when that time comes to be with Jesus, not because I have just have hope of what eternity is, but because I know him now. And I think that's the whole key. You know, I think it causes us to look at our relationships right now, a relationship with each other, but our relationships with God and to make them as strong as we can, because this is the relationship that continues into eternity. Right. And it's one that really counts. And so uh, I encourage everybody and and uh, to, to really think about that, to really begin to think about, you know, it's it happened so quickly, Doug. Uh, it feels like I was 21 yesterday. Me too. Yeah. And um, and yeah, and I I look in the mirror and I think, who is this old guy? I don't I don't get this. But all of us end up here. the The beauty of it is that this is nothing compared to eternity. But it's all part of preparing to pass on, and that's the exciting part for us. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Well, I just wanted to remind people that if they don't know that Pastor Bob's going to be Masters of Ceremony at the Immortal Festival coming up on Labor Day weekend in Versailles, Ohio. Um, I think I said that right. At the BMI Chris Center. Chris and I. Chris Jericho, too. He, he's, oh, the, yeah. he's the other host, and we're looking forward to it. Yes. Hopefully I'll be out there at least one of yeah. the days. But, um, Great. I just want to thank you and I appreciate oh, my pleasure. you and hopefully we can do a long form interview. Cause I got a lot of questions. I would love that. Let's do it. All right. Thank you, pastor Bob. All right, my friend. All Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.